Well hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Wild Your Garden and in this video we are going to be taking a quick look at my front garden. Now I know this is a subject that many of you have been asking about from the mentions I've done in previous videos and don't worry there will be a full formation and creational video of this garden in a video to come. I'm just waiting for it to come into fruition in a month or two's time then I'll put it all together as a time lapse and an explanatory video in more depth and I will be posting videos throughout the year on the garden as it develops so stay tuned for that one but in this video let's go and take a look at some of the new features and have a look at this garden in April. I should also say guys before we start that don't panic I will be doing full videos on all the plants I used and exactly how I planted this garden because the plants are the key element in any wildlife garden of course uh, but in this video I just want to show you the main features and just how it looks at the moment so if we start with the boundaries obviously this wall was an existing wall and I really really wanted to get as much habitat in terms of the vegetation in the garden so trees shrubs and with 20 square meters there's only so much you can do however I don't think we've done bad because from that pillar down to that corner and along this new picket fence that replaced the old wall that was falling down we have 21 species of shrubs of varying sizes uh, and uh, a couple of trees as well we've got the silver birch in that corner there which is going skyward and hopefully will continue to do so uh, as quick as possible i've got a rowan tree that i planted there that's really nice and a victoria plum which is just about there which again we'll see in more detail in videos to come when it comes into flower and i can film the progress of it throughout the year but this hedge i wanted to establish to create cover for birds first and foremost but also there's a few more benefits as well here i have three times older buckthorn for one of my favorite butterflies the brimstone butterfly which you can find here in the uk so i'm really hoping the females won't be able to resist passing this garden without stopping and laying a few eggs so Fingers crossed they'll be turning up within the next two or three weeks. Certainly by the end of May, we will know whether there have been eggs laid on that or not. So yes, varying shrubs within that uh, hedgerow, like I say, and that is about a seven meter boundary along this side, and we've got about four meters-ish along the front, so about 11 meters. So it's a nice block of habitat that when it establishes, when it becomes thicker, it will helpfully, hopefully provide a lot of cover for birds as well as pollen, nectar, berries, and loads and loads of food for a lot of different wildlife. While we're on the hedge, obviously with it being a shady area, I wanted to create a bit of a woodland feel as well. So I've actually got several logs that I've put in that corner, which will provide habitat for a lot of those frogs, toads, and also you can see just in the corner there, I've got myself a little hedgehog box, which we do have hedgehogs, I have seen them in the garden, so I'm really hoping that that might get used. I've got some straw to put in it yet, and with the little hole that I put in that corner, I'm really looking forward to seeing if a hedgehog will wander through from the other side of the garden, uh, the neighbor's garden, and pop in and pay a visit, who knows? But with it being a woodland border, yes, I wanted to really emphasize that and put some more log sacks in. The other logs that I've put in this border are things such as the uh, this lovely old elder stump, which or elder branch, which has gone in to act as a dragonfly perch in the edge of the pond, which we'll come on to in a moment. But underneath the hedge, I have planted a whole host of wildflowers, shade tolerant plants such as foxgloves. Um, the bulb list is pretty extensive. I've got um, wild garlic, lesser celandine, wood anemones, bluebells, snowdrops, there really is a whole host of plants that are going to be coming up there. If not so much this year, because the snowdrops obviously have already gone over, then next year they certainly will be. So I'm really looking forward to seeing this develop as a little mini woodland border, which in time, hopefully it will be. Well, me being me, the next structure wouldn't be anything other than a wildlife pond, which you can see I've put in here. I tried not to take up the entire garden and I tried to split the garden into four sections so we could have a few different habitats because the whole point of this was to try and create a mosaic of habitats within 20 square meters and see just how much life I could attract to this little front garden. So the pond is as you can see quite a formal affair. It's not my usual type of wildlife pond. I have built it using a lot of block work um, with a, a concrete base just to make it a solid structure. Obviously with it being near the house, I wanted it to be uh, structurally firm. So I've built it with concrete blocks and then these reclaimed slabs 
uh, around the sides as well with a view to it having a slightly more formal feel but it will be planted in the next few weeks i've got ledges uh, or shelves that i created either side which are going to be planted with all the native wildflowers that you see me plant around my wildlife ponds plus i've also got great access for anything that wants to venture into the water so frogs we get foxes here um, toads newts uh, hedgehogs as well obviously if they want to come and have a drink the birds to bathe and drink as well so there's access in and out it's very important when you've got a vertically sided edge that there is access for all the wildlife that can get in and out safely without it dropping in uh, things like swimming pools can be a nightmare for hedgehogs so yes that is very very important and obviously when the baskets are in they'll nearly be up to the water level on both sides so there will only be that backside that doesn't have a ledge where something could drop in uh, but then obviously straight from those corners down either side will be some planting baskets full of wildflowers as well so yes easy access in and out for everything but former wildlife pond more updates on that to come it's got a little bit of algal bloom on it at the moment because the temperatures are now warming and i only put the uh, hornwort the oxygenator in there a couple of days ago so obviously that's not quite getting going yet so when that does get going that'll clear any of the algal blooms that you can see just building up a little bit in the corners but yes one times wildlife pond complete with a dragonfly perch i want to say kingfisher i'm not so hopeful but <laughs> fingers crossed who knows and behind the wildlife pond you can see i've built this insect slash bug hotel whatever you want to call it it's a bit unique as you can see i've done some brick pillars and then in between i've got uh, bricks drilled with many many holes for the red mason bees and some of the solitary bees which i'm really looking forward to uh, to seeing along with this block of um, wood that was cut up to size and drilled again to provide nesting habitat for the bees which yesterday i saw my first hairy footed flower bee while i was planting this woodland border or the, under the hedgerow i saw a first hairy footed flower bee go in there in the evening and stay in there to roost which absolutely made my day fantastic and i've also then next to that got a little section of dry stone wall for all the things like millipedes wood louse wood louse spiders um, all sorts of creepy crawlers that were getting the cracks in there and a few logs and ceramic not ceramic sorry um clay t old clay um, land drainage pipes that i've put underneath which might make a nice little hidey hole for any kind of frogs and invertebrates to go and hide in and in the top if i stand up you can see i've made a little planter which i'm going to be planting with various low growing plants which will just be a nice little addition to the garden lots of pollinator friendly plants things like marjoram birdsfoot trefoil uh, creeping thyme things like that so yes the insect hotel i'm hoping will attract some attention and encourage anybody else who passes by to maybe have a go at one of these themselves so around the base of the insect hotel you can see i've put a sparse planting shall we say with uh, gravel on top to really give that a slightly formal feel and make it slightly more easily maintainable but it will also allow a great situation for things such as Vervina bonariensis uh, which I'm yet to plant in there but the vipers bugloss which I have planted in there along with a few more of the low growing plants along the front things like the red clover bird's foot trefoil again a great source of nectar for the bees so yes really looking forward to seeing that develop and also we've got a climbing rambling rector rose which is hopefully going to go up and over the porch along with a honeysuckle to create more habitat and potential for bird nesting and roosting as well then it's on to the next section of garden so another one of these quadrants which is my mini wildflower meadow now this thing is less than four square meters so come on guys if i can do it in that size of a space then i'm sure you can you can give up four square meters of your garden again not even that it's about two meters ish by a meter and a half something like that so yes only about three square meters so it really is a tiny patch but i've got 60 plants in there and i've over sown with a creeping red fescue which i'm hoping fingers crossed might be able to attract one of the marble white butterflies where there is a colony of only a few hundred yards from here over the backs of the houses that i have seen in previous summers around early july time they lay their eggs on grasses such as red fescue and i've got some of their favorite larval food plants sorry their favorite nectar sources in here things such as greater napweed lesser napweed which will hopefully attract them to the garden so if i can pull them into 
three square meters i'll be really really chuffed but i've also if i don't i will be fine <laughs> i'll cope but i've also got along the front things such as the bird's foot trefoil the larval food plant for the common blue butterfly which i'm really hoping i can attract to a female to lay some eggs on along the front i've had them in the back garden in previous years uh, but i'm really hoping i can get a little mini colony going here and this is full of all manner of plants there are 20 to 30 species i can't even remember it was yesterday evening that i finished planting that so really chuffed with that looking forward to seeing that grow and develop and it's designed with the primroses one of the first flowering plants of the year to attract pollinators and provide food for them from march time right the way through to september october if i get some of the field scabious that are in there uh, lasting that long into the autumn end of summer into the autumn so hopefully this little block will provide nectar and um, a shel shelter and a home for many many insects and other animals for a long long proportion of the year and last but not least we've got these two currently rather empty looking borders at the moment which are going to be uh, herbaceous borders that I'm going to look to plant with all my favorite kind of non-native perennials if you like all our sort of traditional garden plants that are still very very good for wildlife of course nothing in this garden is going to be um, of any detriment or certainly not useful to pollinators so yes this currently has the David Austin roses that were in the garden before that I managed to rescue dig out pot on prune back and they are now really shooting up nicely so i'm really chuffed all six of those i've got three down the middle and i'm going to plant all the way around the margins with things such as napitas salvias verbena bonariensis sedums loads and loads of plants going in there and obviously i'll do full videos on my border selection and um, an update video for you guys when they turn up hopefully i'm looking at the end of april to get those in so yes really can't wait to get those planted so that's it guys that's a quick whistle stop tour of my front garden i hope you've enjoyed seeing some of the features that i've put in some of the plants that i've put in and the way i've set this garden out and i should say the reclaimed brick paths are just that these are reclaimed bricks they're not you new bricks i like to use existing materials wherever possible um, so yes i was really chuffed to be able to use those and get those in as a pathway around the entire um, perimeter of the garden and to provide uh, a maintenance path if you like it's only 18 inches wide so just wide enough to stand on hopefully it'll be less than that by the time all the plants grow and kind of cover it over a little bit but all i want is a little path for access around the garden and that's why it's joined in with the copings around the edge of the formal pond as well to create a bit of a cross shape with a border around the edge so yes i think it's turned out quite nicely let me know what you think let me know if you approve of my design and yes i really hope that this garden is going to be an inspiration for many of you out there that have only got a small postage stamp back garden and you want to try and help wildlife here is going to be i promise you a fine example of exactly what you can do to encourage lots and lots of wildlife into your own front or back garden whichever it may be so as always guys thank you so much for watching please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already stick around more videos on this garden to come along with the back garden as well i should say i am starting a new playlist which will be my garden so do click that if you want to see any of the other videos that i've done on the front or the back garden because it really will give you guys hopefully some inspiration as to just what you can do with an average size back garden and i will of course as i say be updating you all with this garden's progress and the back garden and hopefully doing you some full garden tours as we go through the spring and summer months so as always thanks so much for the support guys it means the world to me and do stick around lots more cool stuff to come on the channel i'll see you all soon mm -hmm.